and showtime ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the channel pro five minute roundup a look at news trends and tips for the smb channel in five minutes or thereabouts my name is rich freeman i am executive editor of the channel pro network i'm also a co-host on this program i am joined this week and every week by your other co-host eric simpson a business transformation and improvement consultant for msps and other it providers eric how you doing doing well rich doing well um Another sunny day here in Southern California, still under lockdown. Uh, not quite as many um, newsworthy uh, uh, events as uh, in your neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a little, uh, a little exciting uh, here in Seattle uh, lately. But uh, you know, on on uh, on a happier note, uh, you, you it, and it doesn't look like it to our audience, but you're actually on vacation. I am. I'm taking a little bit of a staycation, a little bit of a. I just got to the point where I said, you know what, I just need to just take a break real quick for a few days and just recharge. And uh, just so happens that I was able to do that this week, even though it's, you know, not my typical vacation, but still, um, you know, not checking email for a couple of days in a row is a real vacation for me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very good. I got a vacation coming up in a couple of weeks and I am looking forward to being unplugged for a little while as well. But uh, until then, folks, let's go ahead and dive into our big story this week. Uh, comes to us from Bitdefender, who uh, I, I believe we've been uh, speaking about in the show actually just uh, not that long ago, but they have another new uh, offering that came out uh, this week, and it is a managed detection and response service. Now, um, uh, Bitdefender has been doing endpoint detection and response for a while. In fact, it is a feature of their Gravity Zone uh, security platform. Um, what's significant here, though, now is that they are coupling uh, security software, which obviously is, is something that they've been doing as long as they've been around, with a managed service now that you can outsource as an MSP. Uh, and so they, uh, they're they calling it their, their Bitdefender NDR Managed Detection and Response Service. If you subscribe to this, um, you get the, the, uh, the Ultra edition of the Gravity Zone product, you get uh, their advanced analytics product, some other uh, software uh, systems. Uh, but that is coupled with um, uh, security services from a uh, security operations center in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, so they will be watching out for alerts um, and they will be uh, at a minimum notifying you uh, of incidents that, uh, that they uh, detect there. So th there are basically two tiers of service, one of which is uh, available immediately, the other of which will be, uh, become available um, uh, a few weeks from now. Uh, but if you want them to just contact you when there is an issue that needs to be responded to, they can provide you with very detailed advice on how to uh, remediate the issue. If you would like them to actually um, uh, handle the issue, remediate the issue for you, they can do that as well. And, and they will do that in a way that um, only involves contact with the customer that you have approved um, in advance. But uh, a couple of different um, options for how you draw on those services. What's significant, obviously, and, and this is sort of a trend, is that this is another example of a security maker um, in the, uh, uh, or software maker in the security field getting into services as well. So last year, just as a for example, Sophos um, introduced a managed threat response service. Um, so we're increasingly seeing um, these uh, security software vendors and hardware vendors for that matter, getting into the services realm and um, you know that alone is interesting. There are obviously outsourced security operations center um, vendors of, of uh, many kinds that have been out there for a while. Um, but uh, for that MSP out there looking for an option to get into managed security without actually expend, uh, spending an enormous amount of money to build their own security operations center, to hire a security analyst, whatever. If, if you want to get into managed security, um, and uh, you don't want to have to make enormous investments to do that, you can not only go to one of those traditional outs outsourced SOC operators, but now increasingly you can go to a security software vendor. And if you are a Bitdefender partner, one of those options for you now um, is going to be Bitdefender itself. Yeah, Rich, you know what really caught my eye that I like about <clears throat> this new offering from Bitdefender that, that makes it a little bit unique? Um, you know, I believe from what we've seen out there is those two levels of service, right? So the first level is where the MSP basically gets guidance and advice. So if they're managing the infrastructure and security for the client and they're a little bit more mature from a, from a uh, incident response perspective, then they can use Bitdefender's team of specialists to kind of guide them on how best to respond to the incident 
uh, themselves and thereby maintain that real close relationship with the client as well as you know probably the lion's share of the of the fees for responding to these uh, incidents and then the next level is more built for folks that would rather outsource the majority of the uh, incident remediation response where you know bit defender really then just you know executes on on the response and remediation on behalf of the MSP so I like giving the partners both options there may be some situations where MSP might just do the heavy lifting themselves with a little bit of guidance and, and uh, uh, oversight by the team at Bitdefender and there may be other scenarios that might be a little bit bigger that they feel more com uh, as comfortable handling that they can just bring Bitdefender in to go ahead and handle that situation for them. So I really like that. It, it is nice as a, a channel pro to have that flexibility basically. And I mean, you, you out, there are trade-offs involved either way and you kind of outlined what those are. You know, I mean, if you are the, the point of contact uh, and you're doing the actual incident response, there's gonna be more, uh, more fees, more margin in that for you. Uh, you're not gonna have somebody else, you know, involved in that conversation with the customer, but you do need to have a higher level of, uh, of operational maturity to pull that off. Um, if you're looking for a fast track into managed security and you don't have a lot of in-house expertise, then that, uh, option where uh, Bitdefender is actually doing the incident response will be very appealing, but you, there will be a cost attached to that, and there will be some contact, you know, you know pre-authorized, but some contact between Bitdefender and your your customer. So it's just um, something that uh, potential subscribers to this service will have to kind of think their way through. Agreed. Well, uh, let's take a look at your uh, tip of the week. And it, it, it's sort of the understatement of the year that, uh, you know, for anyone in the audience here, pretty much everything about your business has uh, changed to some extent this year. Uh, it, it's pretty safe to say that's true for your customers as well. And there's only one way to figure out what has changed for your customers, uh, Eric, and that's what you're going to be talking about this week. Absolutely, Rich. And for those uh, Stranger Things fans out there, you made me think of, yeah, we're, everything's changed. So we're in the upside down right now, right? So it's coronavirus and we're having to deal with the new, the new, uh, the new normal, next normal, whatever you, you, you're calling it. Um, you know, Rich, and, and we've talked about this, uh, you know, on the show before and the premise of, you know, surveying your clients to make sure that, you know, you're actually you know, on the pulse of what they're really thinking and feeling about you. And, and I've made that, you know, uh, argument before, but I think right now it's even more critical that we uh, launch surveys to our clients. And this isn't that, you know, report card, how we doing kind of a survey, right? And I, and, and I, you know, I work with lots of partners, as you know, Rich, and some of them, you know, do surveys to their clients. Um, some of them you know, rely on the PSA, a little smiley face or sad face. I, I'm talking about a, an intentional survey that's created to explore other different ways that we can be of service to our clients. And all. Of course, we're going to give the, the little net promoter question of, hey, would you recommend us to someone else? That gives us a you know, pretty good indicator of how they're feeling. Uh, but then ask more, more direct questions about in what other ways can we be more valuable to you in the relationship? And then, you know, unearth uh, and don't just give them, you know, checkbox answers. Let them fill in and send these only to the business owners, the CEOs, or in a large organization, if you're doing like a co-managed IT, send them to your direct, you know, report, uh, you know, the person in charge of you in that organization and find out what they're saying. And, uh, you know, in my experience, Rich, you know, helping partners create a lot of these surveys and, and sending them out, it's like, it's like pulling teeth, you know, sometimes the, Partners don't want, they don't want to hear bad news. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I had, even, I had a, a few clients tell me, yeah, I, I, I know they're not happy. <laughs> well, they're not, well, what are we doing to fix that? Right. So you've got to get that out there and then deal with it, deal with it. Because in many cases, the clients that we think are the most satisfied because they're not noisy and they're not complaining and they're just quiet. In my experience, those are the ones that, that, are the most dangerous because you know when you get the email that basically says uh hey eric by the way can you send over all of our administrative logins and passwords please uh the jig is up right they're looking to leave so we want to head that off and we want to get in front of it and especially right now uh during this time and couch that you know couch that survey around you know we know these are challenging times 
You know, we're here to go above and beyond for you and just elicit that feedback, find out how you can be more valuable to your clients and maybe detect some that are, you know, uh, on the fence or, or at risk, as they say. You know, it's, it's good advice at any time. Uh, and I, I, you know, to your point, I think it's especially relevant advice right now because you probably have customers, if you're an MSP, who were, um, frankly, very, maybe you don't hear from them a lot. And that's because they were actually very satisfied you know, going into this year. Uh, but a lot of things have changed. And even those customers who were doing just fine a few months ago may have some, some needs, some issues on their minds, some thoughts um, that you're not aware of. So, it, you know, in, in uncertain times, changing times, I think it's a really smart idea to be reaching out to customers, giving them a room to, uh, giving them some room to tell you how things are going and what they may need. Um, and I'm, I'm, as you're talking about it, the thing that comes to mind as well is that, you know, very early on, back in that sort of March, April timeframe when uh, this was all happening very quickly, um, I was talking to a lot of MSPs. I wrote a, a small series of articles about what they went through, kind of helping their customers uh, set up work from home environments and, and deal with this very sudden transition. And the, the, one of the themes that came up a lot from that is it's almost impossible to over communicate um, with your customers in an environment like this one. You, you might think you're getting, you're getting in the way, you're hassling them or whatever, but it, you should be leaning in the direction of communicating too much, asking them how they're doing what they need too often. And I think that's just another good reason uh, to, to go ahead and survey your customers the way you're talking about. Absolutely. I'm in violent agreement. And, you know, we've talked on, on this program about that specific point, over communicating with them, um, it was even in my, you know, 10 tips, you know, to help weather the storm of coronavirus for, for you and your customers. So that is the, the one thing that if you do nothing else, you know, increase the level of communication. And, you know, uh, as, a, as a final point, I'll just say this, Rich, that surveying your clients does not create unhappy clients. It just identifies them. Very good. Uh, and that leaves us with time for just one more story this week. And you know what, folks, we're, we're going to set the coronavirus aside this week and uh, just talk about something that was brought to my attention actually earlier today. And you're going to have trouble believing this, but this is a real thing. Um, the, the good folks at KFC and the good folks at Crocs who, who make the sandals, apparently between bong hits or something, decided to get together and introduce a pair of Croc sandals that both look like and smell like a bucket of KFC chicken. Uh, brilliant, brilliant idea. So brilliant, uh, in fact, that when these went on the market, I, just within the last week or so, I believe, they sold out completely uh, within 30 minutes. So if you're interested in getting your own KFC smelling pair of Crocs, um, you're going to have to go out to a site like eBay or something like that. Now, the, the list price on the shoes when they were first put on the market was about $59, apparently. They are now selling on eBay, I am told, for $500, Eric. Holy cow. I can't wait for the, uh, the cologne, you know, to match. <laughs> right, right. And why stop at KFC? There are so many other chains. I, I think we're on to something here. Well, folks, that is all the time that we have this week on the 5-Minute Roundup. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like the show, you want to maybe check out some episodes you missed before, keep up on the new ones when they become available, thing to do is go to the Channel Pro Network channel on YouTube and subscribe there. Make sure you click that little bell icon if you want to get notified when those new episodes go up. Uh, you want to read more about Bitdefender's managed detection and response service and all, uh, all sorts of other great things about growing your business, new products and trends uh, out there in the marketplace. Uh, go to channelpronetwork.com every day because we have got great new content for you there every day. To learn more about Eric and the work that he does with his clients, you should go to ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K simpson.com. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be back again next week with another episode of the Five Minute Roundup for you. Until then, folks, please enjoy the rest of your week. Eric and I are enjoying the rest of your week already. <laughs>